Welcome to Whiskey One, the channel for the novice, the curious, and the connoisseur. I'm Whiskey One, and today we're going to be reviewing the Blue Note Uncut Bourbon. So stick around. Whiskey fam, whiskey fam, sit down and grab a dram and listen to the soothing sounds of Whiskey One. Just kidding. Now this is a donated bottle, folks. So we're in for a little bit of a treat. I wanna do a quick shout out to Mary Beth Thornton who let me borrow this for science and to share it with all of you guys viewing. This is an uncut, unfiltered bourbon. And while I do a cork pop, I wanna mention a few things to all you guys that are maybe new to the channel, or maybe you're a return sipper. Thank you for stopping by. You could have went to any other channel, but you chose this one. And we're doing a quick review of this Blue Note, a juke joint whiskey. Like I mentioned before, this is a loner. This is the uncut labeled as Snickerdoodle. And Mary Beth reached out to me. We ran into each other at a Albuquerque Whiskey Society event. And she thought, why not review it? And I will. This is something that has a little bit of a backstory. And if you guys have not heard of Blue Note, they have like seven different offerings of their different bourbons. They have, I think, a 10 year and 11 year. They have this uncut. But what's unique about this uncut is that it survived a thunderstorm, a summer thunderstorm here. And um, here's what happened. Basically about June, 2019, there was this severe storm that hit Kentucky. And this was one of Blue Note's uh, warehouses that they housed most of their whiskey at the time. And it collapsed. They lost like upwards of thousands of barrels. And it took about four months to recover those barrels and just to be able to clean up the mess, figure out what survived, what didn't. And if you have a bottle of uncut or you want to get a bottle of uncut, know that you are drinking rescued whiskey. So for those of you that like to rescue animals, why not rescue this one? Uh, but on a serious note, um, one cool thing about this is that, yeah, these were the, the barrels that survived basically rested in that sweltering heat. So not only uh, did that force the whiskey to sort of get really deep into those oak fibers in that sweltering heat, there were also a lot of fluctuations because of the various thunderstorms that hit during those four months while they waited to be rescued. And so not only was that whiskey going into the wood, but it was coming out. For those of you that are new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you like what you see, don't forget to smash that like button, drop a comment. Even if you're a return sipper, let us know if there's a whiskey that we, you would like us to try next. I'm always down to drop some videos based on what you guys want us to talk about. And they certainly have a decent selection. Lastly, I wanna recommend for all you guys that are continued supporters, consider joining our Patreon group. Check out our Patreon page, poke around, see which tier works best for you. So if you could do that, mean a lot to us. Now, let's talk about this whiskey and dive in. So cheers. <sighs> Aptly named Snickerdoodle. It's got some cookie. It's got some chocolate cookie going on. Mmm, a nice, healthy round of caramel, toffee. Lots of chocolate, definitely lots of cocoa going on, so you, you get a little Chips Ahoy. And I think with some bourbons, you can expect a lot of vanilla. You can expect a decent amount of caramel. And a lot of that just really comes from the barrel itself. You know, they uh, make bourbon using charred oak barrels. And because of that, the whiskey flavors that get imparted and get turned into this bottle of, of deliciousness is going to be loads and loads of caramel. But where I think this particular bottle shines the most is in the chocolate department. And I think the reason they named it Snickerdoodle is because it does kind of remind me of a Snickerdoodle. By the way, how many of you have had a Snickerdoodle? All right, so going back to the nose, 
a small amount of leather, oak. It doesn't feel oaky. Um, you know, I've had bourbons that are really oak forward. I mean, now they're pretty much smelling and tasting wood. Uh, and those are a turn off for me. That's not what's happening here. It's just really nice and balanced. And it's got a good amount of fruitiness to it. Think of a, a, a freshly baked apple pie. I get some of that. And I bet you if I let this warm up, I'll probably get a little bit more uh, orchard fruit, maybe even some berries. Because I can, I can tease them out, but they, you know, it just really hasn't sat. I, this is a fresh uncorking. And another thing too, if you guys are new to whiskey, don't just judge solely off the neck pour. That's what this is. A fresh cork pot, we're just getting through that neck. And oftentimes whiskey takes a little bit of time to breathe. So let it breathe, man, especially for a higher proof. Uh, you don't have to dive into it right away, but I certainly am. So let's have a little taste. Hmm. Okay, more fruit on the taste. And when I was talking about wait for it to sort of develop or evolve a little bit in that glass, let it breathe, that's where the, the fruitiness comes forward. I do get more apple, stewed apples, stewed berries. You don't get just vanilla. You do get more toffee, caramel, more cookie. Oh man, I'm gonna take another sip. This is delicious, I'll say that. Man. For a high proofer, this doesn't shoot your palate. This is not, this is not a tongue punch. This is nice, welcoming, warming. I want to say that it gives you that Kentucky hug. Here's the difference. This is distilled in Kentucky, but it's bottled and aged in Tennessee. As you might expect it with Blue Note, you know, this is a uh, quote unquote juke joint whiskey and for an uncut, unfiltered, it feels a little, a little jazzy more than anything. I, I don't know that it gives me the blues, but uh, man, this is hitting all the right notes. That's for sure. I'm going to go in for one more sip. Mmm. Right away. Nice coats to palate. You know, for being a high proof, again, it doesn't burn. This feels very creamy. And it does have some cocoa powder. It's dusty, a little bit of that dusty oak, but not oak forward. Man, but if you let it sit on your palate and just kind of hang out for a little bit, you get those balanced notes of fruit, sweetness, a little bit of leather, nice developing uh, feel of cinnamon, but not, not hot. It doesn't drink hot. Um, one thing that you may not know about Blue Note Whiskey is that it's very affordable too. So for all you guys chasing those hard to find bottles, uh, you know, kind of adding a little extra to the credit card, um, this is something that you won't really have to worry about breaking the bank. You can find these bottles for about 50 bucks. I, um, I happen to have found one for about that price range. And this is a seal box pick. Now what's interesting about this particular bottle is that this was a blend of five different barrels. Okay, so it's not a single barrel uncut, but this is a blend of five barrels made just for seal box. If you happen to come across an uncut bottling, just know that you're also drinking from the same uh, barrels that were part of that that warehouse collapse. So interestingly, if you come across a single barrel or another type of uncut, uh, you'll be tasting a little bit of history. I wish I had a blue note that I could share with you guys to maybe compare. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I do. I do. This is also a blue note Uncut. Now this was selected by Tipsy's, which is based in Denver, Colorado. I was lucky enough to find it there because we don't get Blue Note here in New Mexico. And this is bottled at 123.7 proof. And this is barrel number 16477. So I think what I'm going to do is try this, compare it to the uh, blend here. I just need a glass. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, I always come prepared. I always come prepared. So let's have a little sip. 
just do a quick, just a quick comparison. You know, nothing major. Taste the blend against the single barrel and see which one stacks up. I'm sure they're both good. They're both the same price, so let me try that out. Some people like to swirl. I like to roll. So let's try this out. I'm gonna nose this one real quick. It is what it says it is, a snickerdoodle. Now let's nose this guy. Less cookie, interesting. But you do get uh, fruits, you get leathers, you get the dusty oaks and good amount of caramel, but I don't get a lot of chocolate funk on this. This feels very cookie, Chips Ahoy-ish, if you will. Okay, this has got a lot more cherry going on. Interesting. The blend's got more chocolate cookie. More vanilla, more caramel. This has got more fruit. Wow, this is a little bit of cherry forward. As this starts to open up, mm, it's got a lot of red fruits to it. I'm gonna try this out. Hmm. Oh, lots of fruit. This is a fruit bomb. A lot more stewed apples and berries. Okay. I would say it even has a little bit more, more spice, a little bit more cinnamon spice. So almost like a, a spiced apple pie. Hmm. Okay. And it's got, it's got the baking spices that kind of, you know, tell you that this is a bourbon, you know, for classic bourbons, they tend to have those baking spices that come with it. Uh, a little bit more leather but not as much chocolate as the snickerdoodle, but I'm gonna take one more sip here. Hmm. You know, it's got what the single barrel has, just extra. This is extra. So I think Mary Beth uh, landed a winner. I did check out Sealbox website uh, before we we dove into this video today just to see if these guys are available. So unfortunately, they did sell out of the Snickerdoodle, but that's not to say that you probably couldn't find it at a, at a liquor store. So keep an eye out for it. Um, now with the uncut, you can find these uh, in, a, in a lot of different places. I've found them in Colorado Springs. I found them in Denver. I found them in El Paso. I just haven't found them here in New Mexico. But be on the lookout. I'm pretty sure if you wanted to hunt this down, you can find it online. And it has a very respectable price. Guys, this is a barrel proof at 50 bucks. If you're paying like twice that, you're probably getting gouged, but I doubt you're gonna get gouged over some blue note. But it definitely comes recommended uh, by me for sure. And as far as like, who does this speak to? I'll say that the Snickerdoodle speaks to everybody. This is something that anybody and everybody's gonna appreciate. You know, yes, it's uncut. Yes, it's barrel proof, but man, it's very well balanced. And it's, it's something that's not very aggressive. It's so, so delicious. I really like it. And I think Mary Beth was wise to let me try it out and do a, a little review on it because this thing is special. Again, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to us. It helps the channel grow. and lets us know that you like our content. Hit that like button. Again, drop a comment below. Let us know if there's a whiskey you'd like us to talk about next. And for you return sippers, much love. Here at Whiskey One, it's about the one you enjoy. Cheers. Shut up and sit down.